This summer, members of the Green Party of England and Wales will be voting to elect members of a new executive. The executive of the Green Party is commonly known as GPEX. Now, members of that executive are elected to specific portfolios. And today I'm going to be joined by one of the candidates who is standing for policy development coordinator. Before I introduce them, though, I have one thing to ask of you, which is that you scroll down right now and hit subscribe. With that out of the way, and without further ado, I'll introduce the candidate we have with us today. So this afternoon, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Anne Gafer. Anne, how are you doing? I'm absolutely fine, thank you. <laughs> Excellent news. Uh, so let's crack on and hopefully start with an easy one. Why are you standing to be the Green Party's next policy development coordinator? Uh, I am very interested in the role. Uh, I um, think that as um, policy is member-led, it's very important that members should have support in being able to do that process. Um, I've had quite a lot of experience in working with Policy Development Committee because I have been on GPRC and I have been um, what we call a friend uh, to a member of GPEX, which was the Policy Development Coordinator. And so I have a good understanding of, of what's involved and I, I like that kind of work. and I think I'd be good at it. And so what do you think currently needs improving about the Green Party's policymaking and development process? I would like to see uh, policy working groups much more um, in, involved in the policy development process as it goes through. I'd like to see a better understanding across the board of how we make our, our policy. And I think a lot of people don't even realise that uh, policy is created by um, groups of members who come together with a particular interest. and. Um, I would also like to see, I think our policy process started off uh, quite well, you know, decades ago, um, but as things are getting more complex and, you know, we're possibly getting hopefully closer to, in, to having more people in government, there are a lot of crossovers and some of the policy working groups are working quite well together on that sort of thing. Um, but I, I don't... I mean, obviously, you have to have the poli policies in silos to some extent because you need some kind of specialisation. But at the same time, I think Policy Development Committee could do more to try and get policy working groups to talk to each other. And I know they have done some of that already. Um, but I think I would really like to take the lead from uh, the policy development, the policy working groups on what they would like to see as well and not just what I think about it. And so you talked there about um, party members not necessarily being as involved in the policymaking process as they could be. And for context, you know, there's a, a small number of members who are involved in policy working groups, which you mentioned, and a slightly larger group who engage in the policy process through conference. Um, how would you envisage using the role of policy development coordinator to increase the engagement that members have in the policymaking process? I think the first thing to do, and I know it's really difficult to engage people who don't know that they uh, could or should or might want to be engaged. Um, I, I'd like to invite policy working groups to talk to a new policy development committee um, and, uh, and, and invite them to give their views. But the other thing is that I do know that, um, in because I was at my regional conference a few weeks ago, and it was just before Policy Fest, and almost nobody seemed to know that that um, Policy Fest was happening. Um, and I, I just don't know why it is that people aren't picking up this information. And I'd like to find out really a bit more about um, whether people don't want to get involved, don't know how to get involved, find out what the barriers are to people getting involved. I mean, I know that some of the barriers to getting involved are to do with the technology and with the way, you know, the fact that we're all spread around so much, that's a really difficult one to do anything about. But there are opportunities where we could do more to engage people face to face, perhaps, you know, at regional conferences and things like that, to get the word out about how to get um, involved. And so one of the areas that the Policy Development Coordinator and Policy Development Committee are responsible for is the overseeing the policy accreditation process. Um, so this is a mechanism that the party has essentially to uh, enable some motions which have gone through a more thorough consultation process to um, essentially be heard slightly earlier at conference and be more likely, therefore, to be debated and passed. 
How robust do you think that process currently is? And is there anything you'd like to do to improve it? I think within the policy process as a whole, not just um, on accreditation, the actual rules as they're written down are, are workable. Um, they might not be fantastic, but they're workable. And I think the actual um, problem really is getting ahead of the game on this. And so um, one of the things that uh, I have, for example, is uh, a timetable for the whole year with all the different things um, that go on in that time. And, I, and I've got that through, as I mentioned before, helping um, policy development uh, committee and the coordinator, but just to find out when the crunch points are so that we're not, um, so that the policy development committee and coordinator are not surprised when um, a huge piece of, you know, a huge piece of work comes up. And I, I also think that one of the things about accreditation is that a lot of policy working groups, they put their motions in as an e-motion and they actually don't find out sometimes that they could get them accredited and they don't understand the process. But you need to get in right at the very beginning of the policy process and explain to somebody who's thinking of doing a policy what might be happening to them further down the line so that they, again, don't get surprised and find that they haven't got time to do what they need. You know, for a good policy that might well need, um, you know, be accredited, they might not have done the consultation, for example, that's often an area that's quite difficult for people. So obviously you're standing for policy development coordinator, which is a specific portfolio, but you're also standing to be part of the wider executive. And there's a bunch of other responsibilities that come with that. So I wanted to ask a few questions about those sorts of wider responsibilities. Um, so one of the key things that GPEX is responsible for is the finance of the party and overseeing the party's finances. Um, what kind of experience do you have in terms of overseeing sort of large, difficult, complicated budgets and finances? I used to run the regional climate change programme for the East Midlands and um, I didn't have a massive budget. It was about two million pounds or something like that, but I had 20 projects to run within that and I had to um, uh, develop and commission those projects and keep them all to uh, to the right amount of price and to um, the right timescales and everything. And um, yeah, I, I none of my projects went over budget and I think I'm probably quite good at um, managing budgets. I've also been a business manager for Nottinghamshire County Council and I had uh, budget and management responsibilities there as well and I, and I am used to having to uh, make a bids for certain pieces of work and work out how to do work differently rather than um, you know a bit more creatively perhaps to get more out of the money that's available so I have got a lot of experience in doing things like that. In fact, I was in the Department of Environment when Michael Hesseltine first introduced budgets, which gives you an idea of how old I am. <laughs> um, and so uh, one of the other areas of GPEX's responsibilities, sort of in parallel with GPRC, the Green Party Regional Council, which obviously you, you, you've you sat on, is the kind of um, strategic direction of the party in terms of, in terms of its political direction and so on. Um, what do you think the party needs to be doing right now to make sure that it can achieve its um, political and electoral ambitions? Uh, communicate better, both within the party and probably outside of the party. And I know that is a very, very easy thing to say. And I also know from experience, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. Um, but I don't know why we're not heard. There's a lot of, um, I think it varies hugely uh, across the country. And there are people who know much more better, much more about communications than I do. But I think um, getting good communications going is, is always a good start. And then my Actually, final kind of... Can I just, oh, sorry, God, can I sorry. just add one thing to that? I think it... Yeah. I think there's a um, a lot of um, um, local parties uh, as well who still, you know, if we're going to say that this is our political strategy and this is what's going to get us elected, that needs to go right the way through the party. And so local parties need to be understanding that they need a local political strategy that possibly feeds into the regional political strategy that then feeds into the national political strategy. So everybody needs to be facing in the same direction. Sorry to interrupt. Not at all. So the, the last question I have, um, the last serious question I have before I move on to the slightly more unserious questions that I always like to end these on, um, is about an issue that's been quite prevalent within the Green Party over the last few years. Um, and I'm talking about 
the issue of transphobia within the Green Party. Now, the executive has some responsibilities and oversight over some elements of this in terms of, um, you know, financing things like <clears throat> uh equalities and diversities work in the party uh having some oversight of um various other aspects that relate to how we tackle the issue of transphobia as a member of the executive how would you see yourself uh tackling transphobia in the green party on gpex i think one of the most important things that we need to do is to look at the diverse matters report that um came out possibly about a year ago now um and hasn't really seem to have moved forward very much. I mean, there were a lot of points in there that I think we we ought to be looking at. Um, and, you know, from my perspective, we should be um, ahead of any other um, political party in these kind of issues and, you know, equality across the board, respect, all the sort of things that, you know, we say we stand for. We, uh, yeah, I think I'll probably leave it at that, thanks. I guess so there'll be some people who are watching this who this will be the kind of defining issue that they'll want to be hearing yeah. from candidates on. And I wondered if you, if there's anything more specific you could give people as to, to kind of, I guess, your views more broadly on the issue and specifically what you might be keen to, to, to work on as a member of GPEX. Yeah, I'm actually, we're really wary having sat on GPRC to um, say too much because I know that if I say too much in one direction, it will upset people in another direction um, and whilst that might sound like sitting on the fence um, I believe that I do have um, a track record of trying to be fair to people and to hear both sides of the argument to make sure that equality means equality across the board um, and to understand and listen to people who feel that they've got got a problem but I, I'm not prepared to ally myself in one direction or another I'm afraid. That's OK. So we'll move on to my slightly less serious questions. Um, my first of which is, what's your favourite and least favourite Green Party policy? <laughs> well, my favourite policy is obviously the land use one, because I'm the convener of the land use group. Um, and my least favourite policy, I don't know. I haven't read them all. I've read a lot of them, but I haven't read them all. <laughs> That's a very diplomatic answer. Uh, so if you were Prime Minister for one day, what one thing would you change? Uh, the planning system. In what way? Um, well, when uh, David Cameron came into power, he removed the requirement on planners to, uh, on local authorities to require planners to build zero carbon homes. And I think um, that is a, a massive problem um, for, you know, getting down to zero carbon Britain. Uh, my penultimate question for you is what book has most influenced your politics? Um, Trying Hard is Not Good Enough. And, and who's that by? Mark Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, viewers can look it up at their leisure. My last <laughs> question for you is who in the Green Party inspires you the most? Oh, goodness me, that's a really difficult question. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I am genuinely inspired by almost everybody I meet in the Green Party. I mean, I think that, you know, we are a party who works really, really hard. Everybody works hard. I've never met anybody who is just in it for the ride kind of thing, if you see what I mean. Again, very diplomatic of you. Um, and Maybe thank I you. should be the Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. OK, thank you very much. So that has been my interview with Anne Gafer, who is standing for the Policy Development Coordinator position. I'm hoping to be interviewing the rest of the candidates for GPEX in this year's elections, including the other candidates for this position. The best way that you can make sure that you don't miss out on all of those videos is to scroll down right now and hit subscribe. Whilst you're there, please also do hit like. Let us know what you thought about this conversation in the comments. And if you are able to, please do head to bright-green.org forward slash donate to fund these interviews and all the work that Bright Green does. So that's all from me today. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very, very soon.